What's up guys and welcome back to another 24 hour farming video. This video is a little bit different from what we have done in the past so far in the, on the channel because it has been only dungeons so far and something that I have been thinking of is changing up that fact. So we don't just do dungeons but we also do um, gathering and, and open world farms and whatnot. And the first one that I thought of doing was a forium uh, for arcane crystals since it's a very popular item. And I also wanted to get a little bit more into uh, gathering old world materials. And I also did it a bunch for my one week wild token challenge series. So that is what we did. To start it off, we decided to spend six hours at six different zones that were deemed worthy of a forium farming. And those four different zones were Silophus, Ungoro Crater, or just Ungoro, Winter Spring, and Swamp of Sorrows. I went out and used six hours at each of these different locations to test out how good they were. I obviously did this at very different times in the day, so based on competition, the values might have been a little bit different. Also, obviously, depending on your server and how many people's on there, you might get better, uh, better data than me. You might get some different numbers depending on how lucky you are with spawns. But with how it is currently on my server, this is how it went. And also, arcane crystals are also based a little bit on how lucky you are with the drops because you could be seeing a lot less forium veins, but you might be very lucky on the arcane crystal part. So this is 24 hours of farming forum. I will be ranking them from the worst to the best, and we will be going over each zone and what the easiest way to get there is, and now uh, what kind of what kind of numbers we got in the materials. So let's do it. We start out with Swamp of Sorrows. Swamp of Sorrows is on the Eastern Kingdoms. It is right here, uh, placed over the uh, Blasted Lands and down below Red Ridge Mountains. The easiest way to get to Swamp of Sorrows is either going straight to the Blasted Lands or you can go to Karasan uh, or you can use your Dream Walk to go to Duskwood or yeah, that's probably going to be the best case for you. Unless you're on an alliance character, you can just fly from Stormwind over there. It's not that far. So getting there is pretty easy compared to some other options. So looking at Swamp of Sorrows, the amount that we got from here was 101 Arcane Crystals and 3,402 Forium Ore. It's not necessarily that high of an amount. It's not the best that you could be facing ever. Uh, if you look at it from from a perspective of this is uh, the lowest or worst one that you could be getting, it is still a decent place because depending on what kind of obviously competition you are facing on your server, this might be a very good option for you still. And swapping up the zones that you farm in sometimes might feel very nice if you're farming for a longer time. Something that's important to notice here about Swamp of Sorrows, usually there is an, uh, a vein or two that spawns in this little cave here. And also, down here is another cave, and you will need to go into, into this cave to get the maximum potential of veins. Because in here, as you can see, there is a very, very high con concentrated amount of them. And there's usually uh, in between three to five different veins in here, so it's a very, very good idea to go in here. Getting... 16.8 free arcane crystals per hour here is not necessarily the greatest it is still decent if you're facing a lot of competition on your server but i would not recommend going to swamp of sorrows first which is also why we are ranking it the lowest so the next one on our list is silophus it is or some of you guys might be surprised that silophus is ranked at number three but the reason that is for me is because on my server it's fairly highly populated and all the time when i've been out out there i've faced a lot of competition so the amount that i've been getting out there even at late at night or early in the morning there has still not been the amount of spawns that turned out to be the best but the easiest way to get to silophus right now you can obviously uh pretty much get there by by a portal fastest way would be to go to Uldum, 
probably take the portal to Oldham over here if you're a Horde player, or where the Cataportals are on the little island on the rivers in Stormwind over here. Obviously, if you're in BFA content, you can go straight to to, to Silophis from um, the BFA zones, taking a portal there. But if you are not max level, you can still get there by lower levels. Something that's important to notice about Silophis is that currently it is also used for uh, current content. So you will have to speak to the little bronze dragon Sodormi up here to turn it back into what Silophis was before to be able to get the Forium from here. And as you can see, it's already like that for me. So let's go over here and quickly show you guys the route. So... Silophis is a very open place and with the route up on screen here you guys are gonna have a very easy time collecting every every single ore that spawns here because they're all pretty much up against the sides or of the actual zone so you're gonna be flying around as shown and collecting as much as possible there's not really any particular things that you have to watch out for here it's following the route and uh, collecting what you fly by there's not any caves you have to go down into unless you want to looking at the amount that we got from here we got 139 arcane crystals for six hours which is 23.16 which is actually decent. It's closer to to what is a reasonable amount, which is around 25 an hour. So it's not horrible. It probably could have been better depending on how much competition you face. Obviously, obviously on your guys' server, this might be a very, very good spot. And with how many Forium veins that can spawn here, this is definitely a top contender. So I would recommend that you guys try this zone out for yourselves and then look at how much competition you are facing throughout the day. So I'm pretty, ha pretty happy about what we got from Silophus. The only problem is it's a very popular spot for a lot of farmers on my server. So I do not enjoy being here throughout the day unless it's really late at night or early in the morning. So you guys just have to remind yourself of that fact. Let's go on to the next one. So looking at the next in line, it is Ungoro. Ungoro right here on Goro Crater is the next in line for how good of a place it's been for me to farm for him for arcane crystals the thing about this zone is the same with silifers is that it's really really open you're not going to be running into a lot of things and all the veins that you're going to be farming are pretty much on the sides of the mountain they're really easy to find really easy to see and you're not going to be running into getting stuck or anything surprisingly this only beat silifers by a little bit and what we got was 142 arcane crystals for six hours and on a on average per hour, that is 23.6. So not that much higher than Silophus, but it's also a great zone. I really enjoy flying around here because it's really simple. You just follow along the wall and you go in a big old circle, as you can see here on the route that's up on screen. For the amount of Aphorium that we got from here, 4,290, it is an average of 715. So a little bit higher than what we got in Silophus as well. Not by a whole lot is actually really really close so i'm pretty excited about it uh also the way that you get here is pretty much the same with silophis you take a portal to oldham and or kevin's of time whatever you uh, feel like is close to closest and that will be the fastest way to go here and you can fly the rest of the way um and you can take that portal from the portal rooms in either orgrimmar or oh, i'm gonna ss rogue is killing me uh you can take that portal from Akramar or uh, Stormwind. It is very easy to get here. You don't have to do anything in particular. When you guys fly around here, there is nothing really you have to worry about. You can pretty much do whatever you want. You can fly around here in a circle and there's no caves that you have to go into unless you want to. Not very nice, Mr. Rogue. I see you, Mr. Rogue. Something that's important to note as you see me running back here and dying... When you guys are out farming, gathering in the world, you can turn war mode on and off. And depending on how much competition you're facing, it might be a little less on war mode. Because a lot of people do not play on here. But you risk the case of getting killed like I just did. Um, so that's just a little side note. But let's continue on to the last zone, which is Winter Spring. So, the last in line, which is... Winter Spring, the best zone for me, also my most favorite, 
is really easy to get to. Um, you, if you're a druid, you use your dream walk and you go over to the portal for Moonglade, and that puts you right next to, right next to Winterspring, which is basically what what you want. It it is the fastest way to get there, and it's really easy, really simple, and it takes no time at all. Looking at Winterspring, it is a fairly simple route. You also just follow along the walls mostly. You can stray off the path a little bit depending on what you like. But this is the route that I've been using. It is up on screen now. The amounts that we got from here uh, were 162 arcane crystals for 6 hours, which is an average of 27. Which is really, really good. It is, uh, I am really appreciative of how much we got from here. It is a very nice zone, a very chill spot to hang out at. And it, it is where I face the least amount of competition. The reason why I think that is, is because there's a lot of trees here, as you can see in the zone. And for any multi-boxers or any players, they might think it's annoying to fly around these and maybe run into them and whatnot it could be. So I really enjoy Winter Spring for that reason because there's a lot of spawns out here and it's where I've had the most luck so far. For Aphorium, we've gotten 4,984 uh, for 6 hours, which is an average of 830.6, which is also really, really nice. I am really happy with the amount that we got from here and that is why I deem it to be the best zone. So you guys might be asking yourself, or asking me, San, was this really worth it to farm for 24 hours? And I'm actually going to be here to say yes, it was. For the 24 hours, we got a total of 484 arcane crystals and we got 16,892 for you more. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with the amount. It could be better, but on top of it being okay, we gathered a lot of new information about zones to farm in for arcane crystals. We had a lot of fun. And I also want to say, just from the base value of these materials, you can obviously turn arcane crystals into arcanite bars, which can be used to make yourself some enchanted elementium bars. It can be turned into a lot of different transmogs, like the Nightfall, Lionheart Helm, uh, Sulfuron Hammer, and whatever else you can find with arcanite bars. So there's a lot of things that you can turn it into. So the value that you get from the base items are always going to be a little lower if you're not wanting to craft it into more. And Forium is another good part of this. Forium ore is going to be a part of the Relic, Relic of the Past system that is coming in the pre-patch and the next expansion, obviously. It's going to be used for the fifth Relics of the Past relics of the past so it will also have some value there which means a lot of people are going to be probably wanting to buy this besides all the cloth and that is one of the reasons why i also wanted to make this video to prepare you guys for for that um just as another reminder the time of day that you farm these the time of day that you farm for them is really important because depending on how much competition you have depending on the size of your server these zones might turn out very different for you. It's the four zones that I deem worthy of forum farming. So you can all go out and try it for yourselves. I think the best... Uh, I think it's obviously the best cases. From what I've been told, Silifiz and Winterspring are the top two. And a lot of people like Ongoro as another. And Swamp of Sorrows is kind of the last in line in most cases. So you guys can go out there for yourself and test it out. But this is just for some base pre-information. So you guys can figure out what you want to do on your own. But that is really all I have for this episode of the 24-hour series. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. If you have any ideas for me what I should farm next, please do put, put it in the comments down below. I have a couple ideas, but if you guys would want me to focus on anything before that, I would not mind. But until then, I'll see you next time. See ya!